All right. What's up, everybody? It's Tuesday. Yes, I'm live to, on a Tuesday. I uh, hope everyone is doing amazing. Uh, having a good start to maybe this is your, I don't know, for a lot of you, it could be your uh, end of quarter month. For our others, it's, uh, you know, the first month of Q2. So hopefully everyone's off to a great start uh, from a sales perspective. And yeah, excited for you know, today's topic, obviously today is the day, let's go. Innovative Seller is officially live. It is officially um, past pre-order. So when you actually order the book, we'll immediately get a copy. So um, very excited. I actually stopped by some friend's house today. I stopped by Kevin Dorsey's house, Scott Lease, Chris Walker, some buddies of mine here in Austin, dropped them off personal copies. Um, as people that kind of have inspired me as well. Um, and yeah, hopefully, I think you're going to find it equally as uh, inspiring, but it's been a busy morning. It's 11 o'clock and I feel like I've done like 5,000 things. So productive day so far. Very, very excited about, um, you know, very excited about the book. And, and more importantly, like I'm really excited, hopefully, you know, what's going to come from the book. And hopefully all of you have pre-ordered this um, if you have not pre-ordered now, it's, I guess, shit, I got to stop saying pre-order. It's like, you can just order it and it'll show up. I saw we've got the Kindle version live too, uh, which is pretty cool. The audio version, people have asked me a few times, I think audio versions out in a few weeks, maybe two or three weeks. Um, I didn't, I don't really know how this all works, right? Like I'm not like a, a talking head book pro, uh, in terms of what, uh, how it all works. But uh, long story short, um, I did not read the audio book. Um, it was not an option, apparently. Um, so um, you're going to have to put up with somebody else's voice, which, you know, won't be the end of the world. So excited for today. So all this week, you know, if you joined last yesterday, I talked about, um, you know, in the book, I, I really talked about this, which, you know, it's innovative seller, but, you know, keeping pace in an AI and customer centric world. So if you didn't tune in yesterday, and you want to hear me explain a little bit more about that, do it uh, for sure um, as a part of this. And, you know, the other thing I would say is today we're going to talk a little bit about tomorrow. Obviously, it's me and KD. So we're going to talk about AI. What else would we talk about? Um, but today I'm going to talk about how to win in 2024 and beyond for outbound. And I know a lot of teams are really struggling with outbound right now and not hitting numbers, not where they want to you know, be necessarily. So in the book. I'm going to talk about what you need to do. You know, I talk about what you need to do to be successful, but I'm going to give you guys a quick kind of cheat code here. Uh, I'm also, let me just hop on LinkedIn as well. Let me drop a couple links for everybody. Um, so you have what you need as a part of this. Uh, if you have not pre-ordered the book, um, then, you know, all right. Christy's already hopping in. Love it. What's up, Christy? Hope you're doing great. Regional VP, Home Health. Um, oh, whoops. I tried to paste the link. If you have not pre-ordered the book, why is why are the comments failing? We did this yesterday too. Let me refresh here. Um, let's go. If you've not pre-ordered the book, now's the time. Pre-order the book. It looks like I've like copied and pasted the link in there twice. So just uh, ignore that first one. Um, so, all right, let's talk about current go-to-market strategy. Okay. Everybody is trying to generate more leads. Who doesn't want more leads? I've never met a company ever on the planet earth that was like, Jake, you know what? We just don't want any more leads, right? These leads, you know, now they might not need one or more like shit leads, but they're like, I've never met a company that's like, Hey, I just absolutely don't want more leads. Um, so I'm going to talk about the three pillars of this. So just so you guys know, when you read the book, what I tried to do is there's four principles you know, one's around commitment to technology and AI, current go to market, which I'll talk about, uh, customized sales experience and um, consistent performance optimization, the four C's. I tried to make it easy. Apparently every, every book needs a uh, acronym or two or three. Um, so I tried to make it easy. Within each book or within each principle, there are three pillars. And what I tried to do is I tried to make the pillars kind of the like, yeah, Jake, I get it. I need a current go-to-market strategy, um, you know, but like, what the hell do I actually do? <laughs> and so if you know me, you follow my content, you know, I love to get tactical. Um, and so, you know, for me, that was a big part of this is like, how can I make the book as actionable, you know, really as possible, which, you know, 
which is what I think we've done a good job of. So I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about what you need to do. If you're like, look, Jake, I want to be, I want to have a better go-to-market strategy. And particularly I'll talk a little bit about outbound, but it's very applicable to inbound and how we generate leads from an inbound standpoint as well too. So let's jump into it. All right, let me pull up my notes here. Okay, so the three pillars, I'm gonna drop all three of them into the comments. Um, as usual, I always love seeing where people are joining from. So if you wanna drop in there, you know, uh, I can see your role for most of you. Oh my gosh, it's so weird. It's like failing to post comments like over and over again here. Um, but drop where you're, you're joining from. I love to see where people join from. We usually have a pretty uh, international and uh, diverse audience. So I love that. Um, Oh my God, the comments are like not posting. So I don't know what to do. Okay, so I'll just talk about it and we'll figure out how to get the comments to post. So the very first thing, if you wanna have a current go-to-market strategy, okay? And this one, I think for a lot of you is gonna be like, well, yeah, no shit. Um, but let's see if that worked. Nope, okay. Well, I'll just tell you what it is. Is it, I don't, let me know if the comments are like not working for anybody else as well too. Maybe it's just me, who knows? Um, but the very first thing is uh, sales and marketing alignment. Right. And OK. And, and I, I called it marketing and lead gen team alignment. Um, what is really important uh, is to think about this. We've talked about this for a long time. Right. That sales and marketing need to be on the same page. I am telling you right now. If marketing and sales are not on the same page, you are going to continue to not hit your numbers. If you've got marketing over here running on what they think is important and sales running over here on what they think is important, you are not going to hit your numbers this year or next year or, or beyond. Now, what I also wanna talk about is how marketing needs to evolve and how sales needs to evolve. Um, one is you gotta make sure their incentives are uh, aligned at the top. And like, look, if they're not, that's, uh, you know, there's some things that you can do about that. But the easier way is if everyone's incentives are aligned at the very top of the funnel, right? Like marketing is also incentivized on revenue, you know, not just MQLs, which are someone attended a webinar and then everyone's like, um, you know, well, that's not a lead, right? It's like, like a crap lead. Um, so marketing and sales incentives are aligned. That's one part of this. But the bigger picture piece is this, is marketing's job is to help throughout the funnel. And more and more people today want to self-guide. Marketing is not used to putting more product information on the website, right? Like putting out like, what's our pricing look like? Putting out a demo video. There's a whole bunch of different things that people can do that can help to optimize performance around the marketing strategy as a part of this. But if, if your sales team is over here, like pounding the pavement, doing their thing, and marketing is not supporting it. Um, all right, it looks like the uh, uh, Nate is from Middle Earth. So welcome Nate from Middle Earth, that's fantastic. Um, so it looks like the comments are working for other folks as well. So that's fine. Um, so and again, marketing and sales and marketing thinking about what do modern customers want to see, right? Like again, like why it's on the cover customer centric world. If marketing and sales aren't aligned on making your process, your revenue process, um, uh, more customer centric, like what do our, what do different buyers want to see? You know, it's pretty shocking to me how, uh, frequently, you know, I think marketing's like, well, this is our ICP and sales doesn't agree. So if you want to have a current go-to-market strategy, everyone needs to align on who we sell to. And then the second thing everyone needs to align is like, how do we meet different types of buyers where they are in the journey? Do we have a self-service option? This is fucking revolutionary to a lot of B2B companies. Like, yeah, you should. Again, in the book, I quote, there's a study McKinsey did. Hold on. All right, I'm back. Um, there's a study McKinsey did um, that talked about just like how people want to self-service now. Like, they don't even want to talk to a rep. I think it's like the stat I saw is like 44% of millennials would prefer to have a salesperson less experience, right? And so your marketing team has to equate for that. And so marketing and sales teams need to be aligned. That's the, the very first pillar. And I give some very tactical ways to do that as well. All right, I'm going to try and post like copy number two. Uh, as a part of this. Let's see if that worked. Nope, failed to comment. I'm blocked from commenting on my own post apparently. Um, so, uh, but number two, I'll just tell you, is focusing on outcomes, not volume. If you want to have a current go-to-market strategy and you want to hit your outbound numbers, you have to stop tracking activity as the leading indicator. And I'm gonna shout this from the rooftops for everybody to hear. Activity 
in 2024 for B2B companies is not the leading indicator to success. And I'm gonna tell you why. It used to be, I'll, get, I'll do a history lesson, and some of you have probably heard me give this history lesson, but I'll give it uh, again for those of you who have not heard me give this history lesson. Activities as the leading indicator is uh, something that came about 20 plus years ago, okay? And why it worked, and I want to be very clear, it worked. And it was the leading indicator because all the activities the sales team was doing were personalized and customized because we couldn't do bulk activities. If I called you, I was trying to book a meeting with you. I called you up. I'm like, oh, hey, Jake Henderson, what's going on? Blah, 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 blah. Right. If I sent an email, I wasn't sending out 85 emails that were just spam. I was customizing the email and personalizing it, which I'll get to that. You know, I'll get to the third pillar, which is around uh, customization and outbound. And that's the only way to win today. Um, and so every activity that I did, when I did more activities, the more component was still high quality. I wasn't hitting send all. Fast forward to today. Why, why activities is not a leading indicator is because my act, the types of activities I'm doing are all over the place. I might be hitting send all really low quality. I might be doing some customization, high quality. I might be doing some LinkedIn outreach, middle quality. And so tracking raw activities is no longer an indicator of potential outbound success or generating meetings. I know this is sacrilege. Some of you are like, Jake, this is sacrilege. Of course, activities are the leading indicator. I'm here to tell you they're not. So instead, you can focus on the first outcome. All right, Becca, your comments are working. Becca, thanks for hopping in. Everyone should just give Becca a shout out. You know, Becca's the one, the, the woman behind the scenes who makes all this stuff happen. So Becca, appreciate you. So this idea that outcomes um, is where we should start is we should start with what I call meaningful conversations. Meaning, and of course, I'm just, I just keep trying because I'm like, maybe this time it will be different. Uh, okay, and now it randomly went through, who knows? So meaningful conversations is where we should start tracking. Meaningful conversations are the first interaction that you have with somebody who could potentially be a buyer or get you to the right person. So if Jake is really good at making videos and he can make 20 personalized videos, and generate meetings. And Susie's a really good copywriter. And Ryan is a really good cold caller. Fantastic. Great. If Jake can just create 20 videos and hit his numbers, great. Amazing. Let him do it. Right. We have to start to realize because we have this multimodal, lots of different ways we can reach out. We have different types of outreach, bulk, LinkedIn, you know, comments or whatever, that we should be focusing on outcomes. And Jake needs to generate five, and Susie needs to generate five, and Ryan needs to generate five, because we know that the conversion rate of meaningful conversations every day to meetings is 25% or 30% or whatever your numbers are. So in the book, I give a very tactical, let's see, it's chapter, let's see what chapter it is here. Um, there we go, let's see. It starts in chapter, let's see here, let me look, let me go back here, it starts in chapter, page number 18 it's kind of cool to hold, hold your own book pretty awesome um after staring at it um that uh it starts in chapter two where i kind of explain this and some of the different things that we need to do to do that so page number 19 you can turn to in your book if you have your book maybe we'll do like a virtual reading like a like a fake reading on linkedin live at some point that'd be kind of fun um but anyway there's a couple other things um to think about um as a part of this so Tracking outcomes is what every company must do. We have to stop tracking raw activities. It's the same way as when marketing tries to get by and say, well, we got number of views. It's like, no, <laughs> outcomes, <laughs> what happened? So if every outbound organization stopped over-focusing, look, and now if a rep isn't putting in the work, if I'm not getting my number of meaningful conversations, having a, a, a conversation with me about doing more activities, sure, I'm all for that. But it should be about doing more meaningful activities. Meaningful activities, okay? Um, so I want you to think about that uh, as a part of this. So uh, measuring outcomes, not volumes. And last but not least, I call it hyper-customized touch points. Um, it can also be relevant. And again, I, I 
steal most of my stuff from KD um, or a lot of the good the good sayings. Um, is there's a difference between cust I, I call out customization in the book, but really relevancy is fine, which is look, the only thing that is working right now, the only thing is whenever you show, and again, like this is some shocking stuff here. When you show, like, I understand the persona and what that person actually does. I understand the sub industry and what that persona has to deal with in the sub industry. And then I understand how we solve for problems for that persona in that sub industry. My friends, this is not rocket science. Okay. This is what's worked for like a very long time. Okay. Is this idea that instead of us overly, like, in order to cut through the noise, my friends, you don't even have to do an insane amount of like, Oh, Jake, like, and I'll tell you, fake customization also doesn't work. I saw that you went to this university. That stuff is played out. People have been doing that for six years now, seven plus years. So it doesn't work, right? Um, thoughts, question mark, played out. Add value. Cannot, I just, I just want to tell you this right now. Cannot hit your outbound numbers if your team is not doing some amount of relevancy or customization that shows the persona in the industry how you help. One, two, three. That's it. That's all you have to do. Winning, I, I swear to you, like the amount of people outbound's dead. Bullshit. Like hitting send all is dead. Okay. But what's not dead and what cuts through the noise and what 99% of people aren't doing is showing that they've done any amount of research. Any. I'll take anything at this point, right? And so that is the key to having a current go-to-market strategy, you know, um, is you have to do those three things. We have to have a marketing and lead gen team that's aligned, right? And mark, and not just even lead gen, the whole sales org, but in the book, I talk specifically about lead gen. I've got to stop tracking. And again, like I, hopefully my salespeople out there are like, hallelujah, stop tracking like more activities as the like, Guys, I wish it was that easy. Look, in sales back in the day, I used to run power hours like as a leader. But my friends, that was like 2006. I mean, gosh, I mean, I'm dated. I guess I'm 18 years ago. Jesus. Uh, 18 years ago, how I solved challenges for, for pipeline is I said, guys, we got to do more activities. But again, more activities in 2006 meant more high quality activities. My team was calling more people to have a one-to-one -one conversation. The emails they sent were personalized. So you cannot think that active, raw activities is, is the answer. It's not. It hasn't worked in a long time, and it's not working now. Okay. And last but not least, you will not hit your number. I want to say this as loud as I can for anybody who's listening. There's like, there was like, there was, like, we had about 70 folks. If you haven't bought the book, make sure you go buy a book. It is officially live today. It's shipping today. That's gold. You can't miss it. Um, it'll be in your favorite bookstores. Maybe we'll see. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of like quotes in here. We got further readings. We got a bunch of stuff in there. Um, so cannot third, but last, but, but not least here. Okay. You cannot hit outbound numbers. If you are not doing some amount of relevancy or customization, my friends, I'm going to, I'm going to say this right now and someone's going to screenshot this and send it to one of the CEOs and I'll probably get a, a message and Jake, like, it's not true. I would like anybody to show me one of these automation tools that's automating outbound, automating LinkedIn, automating email writing that is being used across a team of 80 salespeople. Show me one, show me one company that is using automated emails. 100% across 80 sales reps and is winning today. Oh, wait, it doesn't exist. My friends, you cannot automate outbound. It won't work. I don't know how to say it any other way. It's already not working. Like, like when we pulled the stats for the book, the, the, the last survey we did in 2023, 9% of companies had hit outbound targets. Nine. Nine. Why? <laughs> because... Look, I wish it was easy. If you could just hit send all, I would tell you to, like in the book, I would have said, you know what you should do is hit send all in a bunch of emails and you're going to hit crush your numbers. Like, I wish it was that easy. It's just, frankly, it's just not, right? So if you want to win today, you got to do those three things. Print, second principle in the book, it starts on page. Again, I should do a 
I should do like a reading. That's actually a good idea. Maybe I'll do like a virtual reading. It starts on page 49, page 49, the second C uh, commitment to uh, current outbound um, or like second C current outbound, go to market. Um, it's in there, page 49. So if you want to read more on the topics, rewatch this video or go read the book. If you have not bought a copy of the book, today is the day, everyone. Please go out and buy a copy of the book. We're trying to hit the bestseller list. Uh, we already hit number one on Amazon uh, for uh, business sales. So that's pretty cool. Let me go see. Let's see what the book's up to. Well, I don't know. I don't know how this all works either. Keep in mind, I've never written a book before. So um, I also like run, I also run a company too, which you know means I've got other shit to do. Um, but let's go look. Let's see. Let's see how we're doing here. Let's see how the book's pacing right now. So we're number one in business sales still. That's pretty dope. Let's see what we are in sales, sales, if we're, if we're climbing that list yet. We are number, let me refresh. Yeah, I, I like how I hit refresh. Like, oh, it's going to change the number. We're number 200 in all sales books. So do me a favor, help me out. Let's see where we can go. We're number 50,000 in all books. There we go. The 50,862nd best-selling book on Amazon right now. So help me out. Let's move up the list, everybody. Appreciate you. I will be live with none other than Kevin Dorsey talking about the first C, commitment to AI and technology proficiency tomorrow. Uh, and then I'll be live again Thursday. So you're going to hear from me a lot this week. So thanks everyone for tuning in. If you're trying to get better at outbound, I, gave, I just gave you the, the roadmap. You have to do those. It's the only way you're going to win. If there was a simpler way, I would tell you what to do. And then tomorrow we'll talk about how you can use chat GPT and other things to make it a lot easier. So hope that helps everyone. Have a great rest of your week. I will see you manana with my boy, Kevin Dorsey, where we're gonna talk about uh, how you as an organization can build a muscle around staying up to speed on tech. Thanks everyone.